Hello and welcome back to AP Psychology. I'm Miss Lee and we're still in Unit 7. This video is going to cover work and achievement motivation. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify and apply basic motivational concepts to understand the behavior of humans and other animals. This is going to include intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation, the over-justification effect, self-efficacy, and achievement motivation. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and grab your notes and let's get started. So if you have an after-school job, this may apply directly to you, but it probably will someday, even if it doesn't now. What is your attitude about work? People have different attitudes about work. Some take it as just a job. It's a necessary way to make money. It's a means to an end. Some people think of it as an opportunity to advance from one position to another. So it's like another rung in the ladder of your career. And then there are people who view work as fulfilling a socially useful activity. It's their calling. Flow is the experience between no work and a lot of work. It's kind of the midway point. And it marks immersion into one's work. It's where you aren't really noticing when you're working anymore. So it's somewhere in between this feeling of being very apathetic or underwhelmed, bored, and a lot of work. So you're feeling anxious and overwhelmed. People who flow in their work are driven less by extrinsic rewards like money, praise, and promotions, and more by intrinsic rewards. There are people who study things like flow. In particular, you would look at an industrial organizational psychologist. These are folks who apply psychological principles to the workplace. Industrial organizational psychologists could also work in personnel psychology, where the principles of selecting and evaluating workers are their primary tasks, and also organizational psychology. And these folks study how work environments and management styles influence worker motivation, satisfaction, and productivity. Achievement motivation is defined as a stable, learned characteristic in which satisfaction is obtained by striving for and attaining a level of excellence. You work very hard and you attain a level of excellence. Those with high achievement motivation tend to choose challenging tasks, yet the tasks can be completed successfully. They avoid situations where success would come too easily to be attained. They avoid situations in which success comes too easily, as well as those in which success is unlikely. So they set realistically challenging goals. Those with low achievement motivation tend to be motivated primarily by a desire to avoid failure. So they're going to choose either very, very easy tasks where most people could complete them or extremely difficult tasks where most people could not complete them. They avoid the task with moderate difficulty because they're afraid that they might fail at something in which someone else completed it successfully. Basically, they're trying to fly under the radar. They don't want to stand out. They don't want to appear different from the majority of people. One way to measure this is the thematic apperception test, the TAT. And this is a test where people are shown purposefully ambiguous pictures. So they're pictures that really you don't know what's going on in them and they're told to write a story about what's happening in the picture. A standard scoring system is then used to determine the amount of achievement imagery in people's stories. The results are a showed need for achievement either being high or low. Achievement motivation tends to be learned in early childhood, especially from parents. High achievement motivation seems to stem from parents who encourage children to try difficult tasks especially new ones. These parents also give praise and other rewards for success. They encourage the child to find ways to succeed rather than merely complaining about failure, and they prompt the child to go on to the next more difficult challenge. So the children are constantly moving to more challenging tasks. More general cultural influences can also affect the levels that one has for achievement motivation, and this can be seen through items like children's books, how much the culture values achievement, and how much the culture values achievement. Do we value achievement in the U.S.? And if so, how? And if so, how do you know? What kinds of things motivate us? And there are two ways of looking at this. You can either be intrinsically motivated or extrinsically motivated. Intrinsic motivation is when you do something because you enjoy it and because it's personally satisfying. People who are intrinsically motivated are more likely to work harder, persevere, and produce higher quality work as compared to people who have an extrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation is when you do something because you want a concrete, tangible reward, and it can be detrimental and undermine quality and performance. 
performance. Basically paying someone to do something that they already enjoy doing or giving them a promotion for something that they already enjoy doing can backfire. So let's test this out. Which is it? You strive to do well in school because you know that getting good grades will help you get into college, get a good job, and overall have a better life. Is this intrinsic or extrinsic? It's actually extrinsic. These are external things. These are tangible things that reward us for working hard. Let's try another one. You strive to do well in school because you have a passion for learning and continuously growing your mind. Is this intrinsic or extrinsic? It's intrinsic. It's coming from an internal place of motivation. You want to do well because you have a passion, because you enjoy the task, and you like growing and improving your mind. There are many different motives and many responses possible. Sometimes our motives come into conflict with one another. For example, when we need to make a choice, what motivates us to choose? There are four basic types of motivational conflict. There is the approach-approach conflict, the avoidance-avoidance conflict, the approach-avoidance conflict, and a multiple approach avoidance conflict. Let's see some examples. All right, so in an approach approach conflict, one has to choose between two equally attractive options. You have the choice between a date night or to hang out with your friends. They are both equally attractive options. And as the importance of the choice increases, so does the difficulty in making the decision. This may not be a really important choice. Avoidance avoidance is where someone has to choose between two equally unattractive options. It's very difficult to resolve and often creates intense emotions. So it's like, do you choose between declaring bankruptcy or selling your family home? You don't want to do either one, but you got to do something. So do you vacuum the house or do you mow the lawn? They're equally unattractive chores. There is an approach avoidance conflict. There are both appealing and negative aspects to the decision you have to make. This is very difficult to resolve and often results in long periods of indecision. So in this type of a conflict, you have pros and cons. And then you've got the multiple approach avoidance conflict. This is where someone has to choose between both attractive and negative aspects of the available alternatives. This can also be difficult to resolve because it can be hard to compare the features of each option. You have three very distinct schools here. These are kind of local to our area. And it's going to be maybe a difficult choice if you have to choose between the three of them because there are pros and cons to all three of them. And they're hard to compare. And that is it for the motivation of work and achievement. In our next video, we'll be starting to talk about emotions. I can't wait to see you then. Bye for now.